All right, welcome back everyone. This is Allison Ingraham and I am here at the 2017 Megacon in Orlando, Florida. And I am hanging with uh, comic book illustrator, writer, uh, Jeff Bulky. Thanks for hanging with me, Jeff. Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. And uh, actually, colorist. Colorist. Um, we're the guys that are always in, in back. No one recognizes who we are necessarily. Oh, we're see, and you do a lot. The unsung heroes. <laughs> Actually, those are the letterers. Those guys, <laughs> they do a lot with the comic books, and a lot of people just don't know, like the word balloons and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, tell us about your comic. Well, I have, oh my gosh, I worked on a lot. This is actually my 10 year anniversary of working full time professionally in the industry. Um, started off with Fox with Falcons way back in the day. It was my first comic book. Uh, I was found actually on MySpace, dating myself. Wow. And. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, it just kind of ripple affected into Zenoscope. I also got to work with John Carpenter, uh, the director. His wife actually has a company. And uh, eventually I finally, I, I hit the big one, Marvel. Oh, so I got wow. to do two covers for Marvel actually, which was fantastic. So over a legend, Michael Golden, who's one of the co-creators of X-Men's Rogue. Oh, wow. So hey. completely awesome. I bet, oh my God. So, um. What was your inspiration um, to get started? I always wanted to do something in art. I never knew what it was. Then I went to my very first comic book convention in Chicago, uh, back in 91, I think it was. And walking around, just seeing the artists actually sitting on this side of the table, signing, coloring, whatever they were doing, I'm just like, that's what I want to do. And then just getting to talk with them and just how awesome they were with just every single person that walked by their table, I said, I inspire to be like that one day. And it's really cool that I'm on this side of the table yes. for 10 years now. And it's, it's a dream come yes. true. It really is. Yes, awesome. Um, are there any characters or stories that you're just dying to tell that you haven't done yet? <laughs> um, always, always. My number one character of all time is Venom. I've always, and he's really big right now. They've got the new series out. Uh, they even have a series here, or, um, an exclusive cover for Venom is number 150, it's a Megacon exclusive. I would love to work on that book. I think, oh, I mean, I'm such a fan. I mean, he's on my arm for the rest of my life. Oh, yeah. yeah all yeah. inked up. So that's one character I would love to do. And of course, Spidey. I would love to work on Spider-Man sometime. But actually now I have my own animation studio. So I kind of am getting rid of all the comic book stuff and I have my own 2D animation studio, which we're working on our first two animations as we speak. God, wow. So who or what um, are your biggest influences in your life, your career? Life, it's going to be my parents. Not to be you know, like one of those guys like, oh, my parents. Oh. But really, it is my parents. They were there for me from the very beginning. They said, you, you can't make it as an artist because it's really difficult. But then as soon as like, they got a little glimpse of what I can do, they said, you're going to make it. You're going to do it. They took me to my first shows and my first 15 shows. <laughs> uh, they took me all over. They, they, they come with me to conventions sometimes, so they're big. Professionally, Todd McFarland is number one. I just, I love that man's style, everything that he's created so far. And I know the man is still going. He is my number one inspiration in the comic book world. And Mike Turner is right underneath him. Did you need a lot of, um, did you go to school when you decided this is what I want to do or is this self-taught? Uh, parents, cover your ears, I did not go to school. I actually taught myself. I picked up my favorite comic books, happened to be in Michael Turner and Todd McFarlane work, okay. and I said, I can do this. Of course, I can't do it like they do, right. but I found my own style, my own voice, and boom, it just kind of happened, thankfully. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, so you told us uh, you're working on something new currently as you speak. Your Absolutely. Studio. Yeah. 
uh, my, my animation studio, we're not only just doing animation, do, uh, 2D animations, we're also doing some print work. So we have comic books coming out in the fall, starting in June, just a few days away. We're going to be starting um, our weekly comic strips, featuring a lot of our different characters, and a fairy tale line, uh, which we're only going to have a limited series of those. Coloring books. Um, one of my animators right now, which I'm very, very, very impressed with this, he is actually a former Disney animator. And his name is Rick Farmelo. He's actually worked on uh, the original Beauty and the Beast, the cartoon, Little Mermaid. He's worked on, um, gosh, what else? Um, Aladdin. Even going all the way back to Captain Caveman, if anybody remembers that out there. <laughs> um, Snoo uh, Snoopy, Smurfs, I mean, oh my gosh. A lot of hand barbera type stuff. He has been out there. So he's, he's a legend. He's, he's a legend in the industry. And he wanted to work with me because we're doing cell animation where we draw everything by hand. Well, I don't. They do. <laughs> I'm just hiring them. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of work, but it's it is it's fantastic. I love every second of it. You sound like you do. I do. You, you know you gotta love what you do. <laughs> you have to. You know. Yeah. You Comic really books, do. animation. I love it all. Do you find that there are any restrictions working in the this industry? In in comic books, I'm going to say yes, because as a creator, yes, you're a creator, but you do not own those characters. And it's kind of the same thing with all the comic books. It's like you're, you're working on the books, but you don't own those books. It's actually to the companies. Now, on the animation side, I have just under 100 of my own characters that are copywritten, all that jazz, my own licenses and all that. And when I sell one of those prints, or when I sell something of the studio, it just feels so much more refreshing because it's like, I created that. I am that creator. You know, comic book work, I'll tell you what, it really helps for people to see what I can do. And I think that's fantastic. I love that with every, every ounce of blood in my body. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I just, I don't own any of those characters, unfortunately. So it's extra special when it is yours. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you frequent a lot of the Comic-Cons? I used to do about 40 a year, literally about 40. And there's only 52 weeks in a year. So those 52 weeks, oh, those other 12 weeks, yeah, there were just no shows. November, December, and January. <laughs> That's a lot of cons. But now the past two years, because of the animation studio, I'm actually now down to about 13 to 15 shows. And it's rough, because I'm so used to being on the road, and I'm trying to change everything over. It's working, slow. But I don't expect anything overnight. Right. You know, I, I, I didn't become a professional overnight. It took a lot of years. So I'm just really honored that I can do this now. And, uh, yeah, but I do about, yeah, like about 13, 15 shows a year. It's doing a lot of animation stuff, so, oh, yeah, it's goodness. great. Goodness. So what's <laughs> coming up next for you other than your studio? Doing any more com, cons? Uh, probably. A couple. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, coming up. Signing. Coming up, actually, um, I'm going to be doing San Diego Comic-Con, so I'm going to be going there. But uh, all the shows that I go to, I'm mainly a comic book colorist, because that's what everybody knows me for. Oh, so, And that's okay. Your new, are you planning on introducing your, your stuff? I've been. Like, even, I have it even right here at the show, too. Nobody knows who the characters are, so it makes it kind of difficult, because everyone's so used to, oh, Jeff colors this, Jeff colors that, because I do something called sketch coloring where you bring up anything black and white to me, and then I hand color it up for you right there on the spot. It's my way as a colorist to do a sketch for you guys. So you can take off something one of a kind, unique, and different that nobody else will ever have. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. So where can people find you, your studio, you, you, Jeff? Uh, you can always go on Facebook, of course. Um, I'm, I'm one of the biggest geeks. I'm, I'm everywhere. But definitely on Facebook, you can go to Jeff Balky. That's my personal page. You can also go to Jeff Balky Studios. Also on Facebook, you can find our animation studio uh, page. And then jbalkystudios.com. That's our new website for the uh, animation studio. And that has a lot of different events that we're going to be going to all the way through the end of July. Beautiful. Well, guys, it's been so much fun hanging with Jeff. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment, and let us know what you think of today's show and our guests. You can also check our guest link below. Remember to subscribe, log in, and stay tuned to see who we're hanging with next. Thank you so much, oh, Jeff. Thanks.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>